I had only just sat back down for one minute when she burst back into the room and marched to the front, knocking over a photo of my grandmother and not even pausing when it smashed on the ground. Everyone stared, open-mouthed at my boss, and I felt as though I were going to be sick. What are you doing? You won't come to work because of the funeral, so I'll make sure there is no funeral until you leave. My name is Joseph, and two weeks ago, my grandmother passed away. She was a huge influence in my life, and I was grieving heavily. I told my boss right away that I would need time for the funeral. Please, ma'am, my grandmother has just died. I will need some time off for the funeral. Is that okay? I'm giving you more notice than the policy says. My boss seemed okay at the time. Of course, Joseph. I'm so sorry to hear about your grandma. You're our best employee. Take the day off and here. Have a gift card for our store as a token of my condolences. This is a hard time. If you need anything, just call. My entire workforce had a tumultuous relationship with our boss. She was notorious for her mood swings. So hearing her give an immediate affirmative was such a relief. I spent the next two weeks working harder than ever just to prove that I wasn't going to let them down after I was shown such kindness. The night before the funeral, I hung up my apron, nodded to my co-workers, and left. My boss didn't acknowledge me, and I didn't think anything of it. The next day, I got dressed in black and met my family at my grandmother's house. It was almost like she had never left. I could still smell her perfume, and her favorite hard candy was piled high in the bowl in the center of the coffee table. Her cat, a gray British shorthair, mewled from her perch on top of the cabinet. I'm so glad we're all here together today. Yeah, it's such a shame that it takes something like this to bring us all together. Let's organize a night a month at the very least, where we all make an effort to meet up. How about that? That sounds lovely. In my pocket, I could feel my phone vibrating. I quickly silenced it and didn't think anything of it. Everyone who knew me knew I was at a funeral today, so it must have been a spam call. The cars rolled up outside the house, and just as I was climbing into the car, my phone started to ring again. I silenced it once again, but I was starting to get a bad feeling. Who could be ringing me so insistently? By the fourth time, my phone was ringing. My sister and my aunt were looking at my pocket nervously. When we got out of the car at the church, my sister pulled me aside. You should just turn your phone off. Yeah, you're right. I'll do that now. Just as I took my phone out to turn it off, I got another call. It was my boss. Hello? Joseph, what the hell? Where are you? I suddenly felt cold all over. What was my boss doing? She knew I was at a funeral. I'm at my grandma's funeral. I told you this. Did you ask for time off? Yes. You said you understood. I said no such thing. You need to get to work right now. You told me two weeks ago that I could have the day off. I gave you plenty of notice. Do you have my agreement in writing? My family were giving me weird looks, and everyone who had been standing around on the lawn were moving towards the church doors. No, I don't. Listen, I'm sorry, but I have to go into the funeral now. I hung up on her shouting and turned my phone off. I instantly knew that I was going to be in trouble at work the next day, assuming I still had a job. The idea of losing my job over this made me begin to panic. Joseph, darling, the service is about to start. Come on. I didn't have a choice to sit it out, nor did I want to. But most importantly, I had to set boundaries. I knew I had asked. I knew she had said yes. And so I knew that by leaving my grandmother's funeral to attend work would be letting her win. And this was not something she should have been fighting me on. So I went inside, sat down next to my mother and sister, and I mourned my grandmother's death and celebrated her life. Mary MacDonald was a gracious woman. She was an active member of her church and community, and a doting parent to her three children. As a grandmother, she was unrivaled in her grandchildren's eyes. Mary left her mark on the world. Today, though we are saying goodbye to someone we dearly loved, to Mary MacDonald, we share this song. The priest lifted his hymn book, and we all copied. Just as the pianist struck the first key, the doors at the back opened with an explosive slam, and everyone shifted in their seats, exclaiming in surprise over the intrusion. I turned around too, and gasped. It was my boss. 
She had on her work uniform, setting her quite apart from everyone else in the room who were wearing black. Her beady black eyes scanned the room, searching for me. I slid down in my seat, face burning red. What was she doing here? Where is Joseph McDonald? What are you doing here? Do you have any idea how rude you're being? I'll have you know that I am a manager. I have a responsibility to my business, not to some pithy family get-together. This is a funeral. Please have some respect. I'm not leaving until I speak with Joseph McDonald. Joseph, you don't have to go. We can just call the police. The funeral was already a spectacle. I can't imagine how letting it get worse would do anyone any favors. I sighed, shook my head, and then stood up. All of my relatives and family friends were glaring at my boss, and even though there was a heavy weight of guilt in my stomach, I felt better knowing that they weren't blaming me for her hateful behavior. This intrusion is highly unusual, as most people have the common decency to not break into a funeral for a chit-chat. But how about we continue on with things? I left the funeral hall to the sound of the piano striking up a slow, mournful tune, and voices suddenly joining in. The doors closed behind us, blocking out the sound of the singing, and then we were alone in the red-carpeted hallway. I couldn't hold back my shock and anger anymore. Do you have any idea how many lines you're crossing by being here? This is my grandmother's funeral. We both know I asked for permission. We both know you said yes. So, you can either leave or I'll call the police and have them escort you off the property. She gaped at me, and I waited for her to say something, but she didn't, so I left her alone and headed back inside. I had only just sat back down for one minute when she burst back into the room and marched to the front, knocking over a photo of my grandmother, and not even pausing when it smashed on the ground. Everyone stared, open-mouthed at my boss, and I felt as though I were going to be sick. What are you doing? You won't come to work because of the funeral, so I'll make sure there is no funeral until you leave. I was about to stand up. I didn't want my grandmother's funeral to be ruined because of me. But then my aunt grabbed my wrist and fixed me to the seat. You will do no such thing. You've been warned already, so I'm calling the police. See if I care. I'm the boss of a store and I need my workers. They have jobs. They'll understand. And if I say that Joseph needs to be at work, then he does. That's my right. I was astounded. I understood that they took their job seriously. But to think that she had the right to call me out of a funeral? To believe that the police would support her choice because of her position as a boss in a cafe? You're delusional. You're delusional if you think you're going to keep your job after today. You're going to have to beg on bended knee for it back, and you'll be lucky if you get anything close to your current wage. And I know all the business owners in the area, so I know you won't be able to get another job. You need me. Just leave before this gets worse. If she refuses to leave, we will continue to have the funeral around her. It's a bit unusual, but your grandmother insisted on having her will read immediately. The priest pulled out a big A4 envelope and had a solicitor join him on stage. Together, they started to read through the will. And to my oldest and hardest working grandchild, I grant my familial home and all of my stocks that I was given when I was 15 for a small mechanics business. I believe it has some worth now. The solicitor handed me the deed to the house and the details of the stocks. I choked. The stocks were for one of the biggest companies in the world. They were worth millions. However, included among them were stocks in the very company that I worked for. Not only that, but they would give me a controlling share of the company. Suddenly, I went from a low-level employee to essentially the owner of the company. Congratulations, boss. You've hijacked your last funeral. No more power trips for you. I couldn't believe just how quickly this had turned around, and I made sure to show her why I was so happy. The look on her face when she realized what I was showing her was priceless. One minute she was threatening my livelihood, and the next, I was in control of her employment. Suddenly, the police burst through the doors, and they ran up to my ex-boss. She tried to evade their attempts to catch her, but my family helped the police and they were able to catch and arrest her on the spot. They stopped to talk with the priest, but with a nod and a jerk of her arms, they escorted my boss out of the funeral hall to the cheer of everyone in attendance. I think that'll be the last I see of her for a while. Everyone laughed, but soon the funeral went on, and we told many stories of her life. Eventually, the funeral came to an end, and we all went to the wake and partied in my grandmother's name. A week later, I went to the prison to visit my ex-boss, who was still in jail. 
No one had posted her bail, and she was being held on charges of being a nuisance to the public and evading arrest. She had no friends because of her personality, and so she was alone. What are you doing here? I came to offer you the chance to apologize. You do understand how absolutely insane what you did was, right? Surely you're joking. You're to blame for what happened, not me. That's a shame. Especially since with my inheritance, I can choose whether or not you will still have a job or not, and honestly, considering how you behave both at work and in this situation, honestly, I wouldn't let you keep your job even if you weren't going to prison. And for a long time too by the sounds of it. Prison? For what? Trespassing, causing a disturbance, and after looking over the finances at work. There are some discrepancies in the accounts that you control. So much so that I had to report them to the police. All you had to do was apologize and I would have forgiven you. And instead of just being fired, you would have avoided going to prison. But not you are both going to prison and being fired. Maybe your time in prison will help you to see the error of your ways, but I won't hold my breath. I was ready to feel bad for you, but you're just a spiteful old witch who doesn't care about people's feelings. Your concern is solely whether people find you important or not. But now you don't have to worry. No one will ever think you're important again. And then I left and went to my job as the owner of the cafe.